When we think about this, and this is a, a side I put in particularly uh, in the context of the biotechnology here, we should think what it is that maintains a cell. And here in this diagram, I don't know how well you can see it, this is my cell, uh, and I've listed the various interactions which are involved in maintaining the differentiated state. Uh, there are nucleocytoplasmic interactions. This is what we're modifying when we do a nuclear transplantation, or changing drastically. There are um, cell surface receptors receiving signals from outside. There, of course, some of those signals will go directly into the nucleus. And then if, <coughs> if we look at the chromatin itself, there are, of course, uh, modifications to the histones, the packaging, uh, and there are transcription factors. In fact, I drew this diagram before Yamanaka's amazing uh, uh, observation that he could get reprogramming using, using transcription factors. Therefore, I've changed the color of this to red and to show that that one actually did work. And as I said earlier, these cells are in a particular environment in a, what we call a niche, a tissue niche, now, all of these interactions are clearly druggable. They're all clearly um, open to manipulation by artificially induced small molecules to interfere with the interactions or to uh, cause artifactual interaction. And uh, this is an area which has only just recently started to be opened up. The screen for uh, drugs for, for uh, combinatorial chemistry molecules that will actually have a direct effect on cell differentiated phenotype, either to uh, the, one of the better screens has uh, been done to show that you can get uh, molecules which will help to maintain ES cells in their per potential state. Uh, I think the way is open for uh, considerably larger screens. And we've got to get the conditions for those screens. We've got to understand how to get those cells. And one of the reasons that Yamanaka was successful was because the conditions for growing embryonic stem cells were well understood, and also the means of recognizing the result was well understood. Oops, sorry, I have to put that straight out for the sake of time. I've covered most of those points, but uh, we should really also think of my final bit there, validation. Assuming this is all working, assuming that uh, you know, methods are available, before these cells go into patients, we need to know we're putting the right cells in. And that's not necessarily uh, a very easy job, but we've got to, I think, start to uh, establish protocols whereby uh, these things are validated. Now, there's one other point here, and that is that <coughs> the regulatory authorities and regulation and people have been thinking about this, have been thinking about it in sort of drug terms. You know, can we get a vial of cells that will do the business? And if you think of it in those terms, you start to think of all of the uh, good microbiological practice, uh, all of the probity, all the randomized controlled trials and so on that will be needed to, to verify that vial as a suitable medicine. <coughs> On the other hand, what we're talking about here is a transplantation technology. This is tissue transplantation. And of course, the regulations and indeed the way we look at uh, that type of medical intervention are very different. We look for, uh, for instance, the, the source of the tissue. We look for the permissions. We look for possible dangers in transmission of infection. Uh, and then you're looking at transplantation matching, and you're relying upon the skills of the, uh, basically the skills of the surgeon in transplanting this properly. And a completely different set of regulations come into play, uh, largely in, in, in Europe, certainly the European um, tissue regulations, 
but they are completely, they're looking at a, a different set of conditions. And um, I think we have to ask, are we looking at a future which is a medicine or a future which is a surgery or how do they mix together? And are we looking at a future which is actually a transplantation or a medicine? Or are we looking at uh, possibly understanding how cell phenotype is controlled and looking to methods which may embrace both modalities of uh, modifying them. For instance, will there eventually be a system where we'll be looking for um, some type of possibly drug treatment that will take my poor little heart patient's heart, which after all there are lots of cells of the wrong phenotype in that heart already, and do a transdifferentiation of those cells. No question of putting in some exogenous vial of cells. We don't know. I think that um, it's very well worth thinking of these far distant science and medical fictions at the moment because that'll help to determine exactly where the current research should be. And I would lastly like to say that we do tend to look at this in terms of technology, medicine, biotechnology, opportunities, development. However, we're still very much at the stage where what we really need is knowledge of these systems and understanding of these systems. And what we're really getting back at the moment from the research is that basic knowledge and understanding, which I think is much more valuable than uh, the few quick bucks that may be made by uh, being early to market with a rather bad treatment. Thank you.